Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of solving one variable, one step equations and inequalities. This is standard 6.10a in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 50 off the 2016 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it and then we will look at our answers together. So we have a student that needs to col collect at least 10 flowers and then at least is where we get our greater than or equal to. So it can be 10. It also could be more than 10. It just cannot be less than 10. The student has already collected three. So we have an inequality here to show n, the number of flowers the student still needs. So we just need to find an inequality that represents the solution. It's an inequality, it's not an equal sign, simply because there's more than one solution. Because this, this child does not need exactly 10, they need 10 or more. They need at least 10. So there's two different ways that we could solve this. And we can start with the slower version first. And so, let's see. Let's just take these two numbers here, 13 and 7 right because we've got two different options here n is greater than or equal to 13 or less than or equal to 13 and then the same thing with 7 so let's see what happens if we just put 13 replace that with n see what we're going to get here so we're going to get 16 is greater than or equal to 10 that is true but it's pretty far off what if we get 7 let's do 7 is going to be put in there with n, so 7 plus 3, that makes 10. That's going to be a little bit closer because that at least gets you to the equals 10. You see this 16 right here? The 16 gets you the greater than 10, but it's not equal to 10. So I'm thinking that this 7 is going to be a little bit better, but I've got two different 7s to choose from. I've got a less than 7 or a greater than 7. So let's see what happens if I go a little bit smaller than 7. Let's take 4 away. And let's add 4. Let's just see what happens here. If I add 4, take away 4, see what those solutions are going to give me a 3 and an 11. Let's see if either of those still work. So I'm going to take my n, I'm going to make that 3, add another 3. And that does not work. 6 is not greater than or equal to 10. So going smaller than 7, even though 7 itself works, going smaller than 7 does not work. Let's see what happens if I add that 4 there. So I'm going to say 11 plus 3 greater than or equal to 10. Yeah, that's going to work. That's going to be 14. Yeah, 14 is greater than or equal to 10. And you notice we're going to get the same, so maybe it's J. We're going to get the same thing with these 13s here. 13, this one is not going to work because less than 13 right here, I could possibly get down to 3 because 3 is less than 13. we already shown that 3 doesn't work, so that one's not going to work. So it's either going to be greater than 7 or greater than 13. And this 7 here at least gets me a solution of 10 is greater than or equal to 10, whereas 13 only gets me 16. So that's kind of the slow way. I'm thinking it's probably J. How can we know for sure? Well, there's a much simpler way, but we have to remember how equations and expressions work. So how do we isolate this variable right here? N, we want to get this by itself. The only thing that's on the same side of the inequality with N is this plus 3. So we think inverse operation. What is the opposite of plus 3, well, the opposite of plus 3 is minus 3. Now, we can't just take away 3 from one side of the inequality without doing the same thing to the other. If we do that same thing to the other, now it's balanced, because remember, we're trying to keep it balanced. Whatever you do to one side, you can do to the other side. That's how it works in algebra here. So this n plus 3 minus 3, that's going to give me my n by itself. This 10 minus 3 is going to give me my 7. That's what we were thinking it is. So there is my answer, J.